Are you by any chance uh, aware of uh, the Hutter Prize, Marcus Hutter? He uh, he made this prize for compression of Wikipedia pages, and uh, there's a few qualities to it. One, I think, has to be perfect compression, which makes I think that little quirk makes it much less um, applicable to the general task of intelligence because it feels like intelligence is always going to be messy. Uh, like perfect compression is feels like is not the right goal, but it's nevertheless a very interesting goal. So for him, intelligence equals compression. And so the smaller you make the file, given a large Wikipedia page, the more intelligent the system has to be. Yeah, that makes sense. So you can make perfect compression if you store errors. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually what he meant is you have algorithm plus errors. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, Hutter, Hutter is a, he was PA, uh, PA, PhD advisor of Xian Lek, who is a DeepMind, mm -hmm. uh, uh, DeepMind co-founder. Yeah, yeah. So there's an interesting, uh, and now he's a DeepMind. There's an interesting uh, network of people. He's one of the people that I think seriously took on the task of what would an AGI system look like? I think for the longest time, the, the question of AGI was not taken seriously or rather rigorously. And he, he did just that. Like mathematically speaking, what would the model look like? If you remove the constraints of it having to be, uh, um, having to have uh reasonable amount of memory, reasonable amount of uh, running time complexity, uh, computation time, what would it look like? And essentially it's it's a half math, half philosophical discussion of uh, how would it, like a reinforcement learning type of uh, framework look like for an AGI. Yeah, so he developed a framework even to describe what's optimal with respect to reinforcement learning. Like there is a theoretical framework, which is, as you said, uh, under assumption there is infinite amount of memory and compute. Mm -hmm. um, there was actually one person before his name is Solomonov. Hutter extended uh, Solomonov work to reinforcement learning, but there exists a, a theoretical algorithm, which is optimal algorithm to build intelligence. And I can actually explain you the algorithm. Yes, let's go, <laughs> let's go, let's go. So the task itself, you can- C Can I just pause how absurd it is for brain in a skull trying to explain the algorithm for intelligence. Just go ahead. It is pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy that, you know, the brain itself is actually so small and it can ponder. Uh, <laughs> How to design algorithms that optimally solve the problem of intelligence. Okay. All right, so what's the algorithm? Solve? So let's see. So first of all, the task itself is uh, described as uh, you have infinite sequence of zeros and ones, okay? you read uh, n bits and you are about to predict n plus one bit. Mm -hmm. So that's the task. And you could imagine that every task could be casted as such a task. So if for instance, you have images and labels, you can just turn every image into a sequence of zeros and ones, then label, you concatenate labels and you and that that's actually the, the and you could, you could start by having training data first and then afterwards you have test data. So theoretically any problem could be casted as a problem of predicting zeros and ones on this uh, infinite tape. So, mm -hmm. um, so let's say you read already n bits and you want to predict n plus one bit. And I will ask you to write every possible program that generates these n bits. Okay, so, um, and you can have, you, you, you choose programming language. It can be in Python or C++. And the difference between programming languages uh, might be, there is a difference by constant. Uh, asymptotically, your predictions will be equivalent. Mm -hmm. So you, you read n bits, you enumerate all the programs that produce these n, n bits in their output. Mm -hmm. And then in order to predict n plus one bit, you actually weight the programs according to their length. And uh, there is like a, some specific formula how you weight them. And then the n plus uh, one bit prediction is the prediction uh, from each of these program according to the weight. Like statistically. You statistically, pick, you yeah. Pick, so the smaller the program, the more likely you you are to pick the its output. So uh, that's 
that algorithm is grounded in the hope or the intuition that the simple answer is the right one. It, it's a formalization of it. Yeah. Um, it also means like if you would ask the question after how many years would, you know, sun explode? Mm -hmm. uh, you can say, hmm, it's more likely the answer is two to, to some power because it's a shorter program. Yeah. Um, than other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't have a good intuition about uh, how different the space of short programs are from the space of large programs. Like, what is the universe where short programs uh, like run things? <laughs> uh, so, as I said, the things have to agree with n bits. So, even if you have, sh uh, you, you you need to start. Okay, if if you have very short program and they're like a, still some has if, if it's not perfect with prediction of n bits, you have to store errors. What are the errors? And that gives you the full program that agrees on n bits. Oh, so you don't agree perfectly with the, the n bits and you store the errors. That's like a longer a longer program, slightly longer program, because it contains these extra bits of errors. That's fascinating. What's what's your intuition about the the programs that are able to do cool stuff like intelligence and consciousness? Are they uh perfectly like is is it uh is there if then statements in them? So like is there a lot of exceptions that they're storing? So um you could imagine if there would be tremendous amount of if statements, yeah, then they wouldn't be that short. In case of neural networks, you could imagine that the what happens is uh they uh when you start with an uninitialized neural network, uh it stores internally many possibilities how the uh, how the problem can be solved and hdd is kind of magnifying some some uh, some uh, paths which are slightly similar to the correct answer so it's kind of magnifying correct programs and in some sense hdd is a search algorithm in the program space and the program space is represented by uh, you know kind of the wiring inside of the neural network and there's like an insane number of ways how the features can be computed.